Okay, so the, in the second half of uh, section 3.2, we will find, or I will give you the formula that would work for continuous compounding. All right, so what happens is, uh, and maybe you can see what's going on here. Take a look at, you know, this thing here, or what's going on is as K goes to a really, really big number, Okay, this number gets really big, right? And then uh, you have some big number times 30, if you're talking about a 30 year period. So what happens is this number gets really, really small. Okay, you have already seen a 0 0.12 divided by 365 is a very tiny number. So it turns out the number inside the parentheses, this approach is one, okay? One plus a very small number. But this exponent gets bigger and bigger. All right. So in a sense, and we use this kind of language in mathematics, um, this is an uh, indeterminate form. What is an indeterminate form? I am referring to this one raised to infinity because this thing becomes one. The base number becomes closer and closer to one, where the uh, exponential part, the exponent, gets bigger and bigger and approaches infinity if it could become if it makes sense to say things like approaching infinity because you know you'll never get to infinity you can even never get closer to infinity but uh, as the exponent gets bigger and bigger without bound uh, one to the infinity what is this number well the answer is it's indeterminate in other words it depends it depends on how quickly this is approaching one and how quickly the exponent is approaching infinity. That sounds like a crazy thing. Yes, it is sort of crazy, but over the last centuries, mathematicians have um, figured out how to approach this kind of uh, uh, indeterminate forms. And indeterminate means it varies. This one does not make sense, but for this particular expression, it actually does make sense. And, you know, see, the thing is this, if you take one, to any power, it's going to always stay as one, like one to the hundredth is one, one to the millionth is one, right? But then if you have something even slightly bigger than one, and if you take this to a very large number, this approaches infinity, right? So what's going on here? Okay, and you can read more about this in the textbook, but this thing inside, wants to remain small like one, but this outside force wants to make this thing bigger to infinity if possible, all right? Uh, we sometimes, I call this the Peter Pan dilemma. Why, why Peter Pan? Well, remember Peter Pan who doesn't wanna grow up to be an adult, all right? So this thing here wants to stay as one, like small, but this outside world force tries to make this into infinity or trying to make it really, really big. So we have two forces, the force that wants to remain small like one and the force that tries to stretch it to infinity to really, really a big number. So who wins in this tug of war, right? Well, actually, they come to a compromise. It's an incredible uh, kind of a phenomenon, all right? And um, here's the definition, right? You notice here, the idea is if you have one plus one over n, this thing as n approaches infinity, this thing wants to become zero. So this whole thing becomes one or close to one, but this one tries to stretch it to infinity, all right? And so, over the last few centuries, uh, namely Leonard Euler, the Swiss mathematician in the 1700s, figured out uh, you can take a limit of this as n approaches infinity, and it strangely approaches an interesting number, 2.7182818, and this continues just like pi. This is an irrational number, and in honor of Euler's name, which, which is spelled E-U-L-E-R, we don't pronounce this as Euler, it is Euler. And uh, with his name starting with E, we now call this mysterious number E, the lowercase E, okay. A fascinating number, okay. And in fact, there's an entire book written about this. It's called E, the story of a number, okay. That's how important this number is. Now, personally, this is my dear number. This is one of my best friends. Um, if um, I have spent a lot of time with this 
friend of mine called E, and it is, in my estimation, the most important number that holds our universe together. And it sounds like I am stretching, I'm exaggerating or overstating this, but I don't think it is possible to over, overstate how important this number is. Okay, and we'll come, uh, we'll see this number again uh, when we talk about things like normal distribution and uh, uh, exponential growth and so on. Okay, but anyway, this E turns out to be the key to understanding this continuous compounding. All right, um, this, this irrational number turns out to be super important in all of mathematics and in natural sciences. All right, and here's a continuous compounding formula. The amount after T years is going to be P, remember, um, for the um, other, you know, uh, compounding like monthly and and quarterly and uh, daily, this is our formula, right? Okay, it's going to be much simpler. If you have continuous compounding, the amount is going to be your p, the the uh, the principal times this number e. Remember, this is that this this you know irrational number raised to the r times t where r is the apr it's compound this is the annual percentage rate and t is time in years now because it is spelled like p and e r t it's sometimes called the pert formula p e r t or the shampoo formula because there's a famous shampoo named pert Right. And so that is our formula for compound, compound interest. And again, I have to stress, this is only used if you are told that the interest compounds continuously. OK, you don't use this for annual or semi-annual or quarterly or monthly calculations. So this is uh, rather limited in its application. But this is the formula. Let's do an example. Uh, let's let P be 10,000. OK, how much will you have in 30 years? That sounds familiar. We've done this four times already uh, with 12%. And, but in the last four times, it's, uh, that you know, in the um, A, B, C, and D above here, uh, we have calculated this amount for annual, quarterly, monthly, and daily compounding. This time it's continuous compound. The formula is going to be simpler. Calculation itself is simpler. It's 10,000 times E raised to what? 0.12 times 30, because this is R and this is my T, right? So it's 0.12 times 30. And that, of course, is, right, let me go ahead and write this down. This is 10,000 times E raised to the 3.6 power. Okay, and all you have to do is to enter this on your calculator and you'll find out this turns out to be 365 thousand nine eighty two point three four that's the number of dollars you'll have after 30 years this number is fairly close to this number 365 uh, it's slightly more a few hundred dollars more after 30 years but again this also shows you that more frequent the compounding is the uh, more money you'll end up with all right now let me show you how to do this on your calculator Okay, so we are back to the scientific calculator. We are to do 10,000 times e to the, you know, 0 0.12 times 30. All right, so how are we going to do that? Right, you see this note, uh, the key here, e, all right? Every scientific calculator has this thing called e, uh, and that is the, uh, the, the base I was talking about, which is uh, 2.718281818 and so on the most important number in the universe. People actually have accused me of uh, worshiping this number E. You know, um, like there's a song like I worship the, but instead I worship E, you know, and but, but I don't do that, okay? But I mean, this is a number that is very, very, very important in not just in mathematics and engineering, but also in natural sciences. So uh, I can understand certainly if somebody wants to worship this number. I don't do that, but you know, uh, it is a highly regarded number. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 10,000 times, all right, and then we do E raised to, okay, 
what am I raising it to? Well, it's 0 0.12 times 30, which is 3.6. But if you do not want to do this in your head, you can do a parenthesis, uh, 0 0.12 times 30, close parenthesis. And notice here, everything that I'm doing is here listed. So you can tell what's going on here. Did I do this right? Yeah, I had uh, 10,000 times e to the 3.6 power. And if I hit enter, I will have my answer, which is this, okay? This number is exactly what I have written, okay? Uh, to the nearest cent. Um, so that is how you can calculate this, right? Now, if you don't wanna use the parentheses, then that's okay too. All you have to do is this, you can do E raised to 3.6, and you can even put enter or equal sign. That's E to the 3.6 power. And then you multiply this by 10, thousand and that is your answer okay so that uh summarizes or that um, does it for section 3.2